cracking down on the black market's one thing. And we talk about the black market like it's, you know, sinister and there are, you know, vape dealers lurking in back alleys. But the, the, the truth of it is vapes are so easy to get. I mean, they, they, we're buying them from convenience stores. That's what, yeah, that's what Australians are doing. Laura, so, you know, we represent responsible retailers. We represent about 7,000 in Australia. Now, what we've seen is an explosion in these pop-up convenience stores, or they're calling them convenience stores, yep. um, and tobacconists, which ultimately, and the report that you mentioned in W, uh, that uh, nine in 10 stores in these schools, yep. that was a report in WA only. Mm. And it's important to note that in WA, it's actually been illegal to uh, sell vaping products since 2016. Okay. So the model that Minister Butler is moving to, we've actually got a real world experience of that in uh, Western Australia. And it just proves the point that these operators, they're selling them in plain sight, but unfortunately, they're actually setting up these stores and these schools to target children. And yeah. the only way that you can address this access, in our view, just like we do, we don't have kids going to the Bottolo, we don't have kids going to any of the 20,000 retailers that sell tobacco, and just buying it freely. So, yes, we need enforcement. Yes, we need proper regulation. Um, but we also need, most importantly, the federal government to sort of acknowledge that whilst there's this huge effort to stop it at the border and to, to break down this illegal trade on the ground, yeah. We actually need a common sense approach here. And, you know, I think our estimates put the number at uh, well over 2 million within the next six to nine months. And that's just absurd when you think about it. So starving the demand uh, or starving the the availability of products and making it vi available only via prescription is just asking uh, for more of a black market, for mm. more children to have access and they just need to take it seriously rather than just say ban it because it's yeah. not going to work. Yeah, there's a little thing called uh, internet shopping too, uh, which I think probably doesn't help at all. Just uh, finally, Theo, we know what, what, what it took to get smoking rates down to the rates they are now. Shouldn't this government just be replicating that? Plain packaging, um, regulate them on, on the open market and, you know, really tax the hell out of them, to be honest. Yeah, look, so, Laura, um, we we believe that's the approach and we only need to look at countries like as close as New Zealand. And I'll use that as an example. New Zealand has had a 35% decline in smoking rates in the last three years since they introduced the regulated vaping model. Guess what? New Zealand doesn't have an out-of-control black market. New Zealand doesn't have an out-of-control child vaping crisis. Mm. Um, and that's been replicated uh, in the UK, uh, in Canada, in the US and many parts of Europe. So the primary goal needs to be getting people off smoking. And if vaping just so happens to be that uh, the thing that's going to deliver the results, then I think it just needs to be regulated, like you say. All right, we'll keep pushing. Theo, thanks so much for your time as always.